Hi guys, welcome! In the upcoming patch update, we'll be getting another exciting round of skill adjustments and balance tweaks that are set to shake up the evolving meta. And in this video, we'll dive into the changes affecting Arcane Master, Novus Guardian, Divine Avenger, Solar Traver, and Luna Densus. These classes have fallen out of the meta for quite some time, and we're hopeful that the upcoming changes will finally boost their popularity in both PvE and PvP. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, let's dive into the buffs for the wizard class. First, the cooldown of Sandstorm has been halved from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. This makes it much easier to stack Sandstorm even if the unlimited passive is not triggered. Second, the damage interval of Quick Sand Vortex has been adjusted from 1 second to 0 0.5 seconds, while its duration has been shortened from 20 seconds to 15 seconds. This will boost the damage output of Quick Sand Vortex by approximately 50%, allowing it to inflict 30 ticks of damage instead of just 20. Third, Water Asphyxia now comes with a new effect where it reduces the enemy's magic damage reduction by 10%. If the target is caught in Quicksand Vortex, an extra 10% magic damage reduction will be removed. Although this debuff doesn't affect MVP and mini monsters, it's still a game changer against normal monsters and enemy players. And fourth, Flame Dash has been revamped to deal damage to group of enemies, with each stack of the target's alight status increasing the damage by an additional 80%. However, Arcane Masters normally don't include Flame Dash in their end game build and skill rotation. Because of this, I don't think this particular change will have much impact. Overall, these buffs for Sandstorm, Quicksand Vortex, and Water Asphyxia are much needed for elevating the damage potential of Arcane Masters' skill caster build. However, will these changes be enough to surpass the DPS of the auto attack build? Up next, we have the buffs for the Super Novus class. First, Thunderbolt will now deal damage twice with a 1 second interval. This also applies to the Thunderbolt proc by Storm Gust and Lightning Meteor. Second, the first line effect of the Blizzard Thunderstorm Star Rune has been adjusted, increasing the upper limit from 20% to 50%. Given the low base multiplier from Storm Gust, this buff should significantly improve its damage potential if you manage to get a high first line value. Don't worry though if you already have a Gold Star Rune, as the existing runes will be adjusted accordingly. Third, the Vulture's Eye passive skill now has an additional effect on Breakthrough that boosts magic AoE damage by 20%. This will further enhance the damage of Magic Nogu's AoE skills. And fourth, Eden Team Blessing's ability to provide immunity to magic damage will now last until receiving magic damage 21 times instead of just 9. This means Nuvus Guardians will be able to withstand more attacks from Yormungandr and other magic DPS classes. Overall, these buffs for Thunderbolt, Stormgust, and Vulture's Eye will undoubtedly enhance the damage potential of Novus Guardian's magic build. However, will it be enough to topple the Jormungandr's dominance in the current PvP meta? Up next, you have several adjustments affecting Crusader's defensive capabilities. First, the Prestige passive skill will now additionally reduce the attack speed of the attacker by 50% when Autoguard successfully blocked their attack. Second, the auto attack damage reduction gain from Fearless Party Buff is increased from 5% to 20%. Third, Holy Light Barrier will now be able to reduce the damage received from both ranged physical and magic auto attacks. And fourth, the cooldown of King's Guardian has been reduced from 4 to 5 seconds to 25 seconds. All these adjustments will improve the survivability of Divine Avengers and their teammates against the current meta DPS classes in PvP such as Jormungandr, Fenrir, and Thor. Will these buffs be enough for Divine Avengers to earn a spot in the meta? And lastly, we have the adjustments for the Bard and Dancer class. First, the end of Sun and Moon Ensemble skill now has an additional effect that forcibly reduces the enemy's movement speed by 10% for each stack of Doomsday. In PvP and GVG, this debuff completely ignores the slow immunity from Moonlight Flower Star card, so for enemies with low movement speed, it will be more challenging to escape the insta-death effect after accumulating 5 stacks of Doomsday. For PvE, keep in mind that the insta-death effect does not apply on monsters, so it will just maintain the minus 50% movement speed debuff on monsters. Additionally, Southern Loot and Wishing Star's Tier 5 effect has been adjusted, increasing the movement speed of Doomsday while following the player from 30% to 50%. These two changes to End of Sun and Moon will definitely make it easier for performers to improve their kill count in GVG. 
So that's it for the class bounce adjustments impacting Arcane Master, Novice Guardian, Divine Avenger, Solar Traveler, and Luna Densus coming in the June patch update. Will these buffs be enough to dethrone the current powerhouses in PvE and PvP? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned for my next video as I keep you updated on the buffs affecting the Stellar Hunter, Phantom Dancer, Yamata, and Amaterasu. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I'd love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.